This is a podcast by The Straits Times. Welcome to Singapore's War on COVID, a podcast series by The Straits Times. This podcast series is based on selected chapters from a book detailing Singapore's experience battling the COVID-19 pandemic. The book, written by journalists of The Straits Times and edited by ST's executive editor Sumiko Tan, is titled In This Together, Singapore's COVID-19 Story and is available in major bookstores now. Details online at stbooks.sg Hello, I'm Sumiko Tan, Executive Editor of The Straits Times. In this sixth and final episode, we're going to look at how Singapore transitioned to living with the COVID-19 virus. Happy birthday, Singapore! On August 9, 2022, Singapore celebrated its 57th birthday at the Marina Bay Floating Platform. More than 25,000 spectators in the national colours of red and white watched a three-hour parade and show with hundreds of thousands more tuning in from home. The 2022 National Day celebrations came after two years of smaller-scale decentralised festivities because of COVID-19 restrictions. Spectators in 2022 were strongly encouraged to be masked. But other than that, it felt almost like pre-COVID times. As these spectators told the Straits Times after the parade. In the past, we had a lot of restrictions. Um, we even scaled down our nation's birthday. So uh, we didn't have large gatherings. Things that seemed normal became very restricted. But now, it's, it seems like uh, uh, things are getting back to normal. The best song for me is the national anthem, Madura Singapura. The best thing about the National Day Parade for me uh, is actually the different sing-alongs. Songs and the fireworks. Fireworks. The fireworks. Fireworks. The day before, on August 8, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong had said in his National Day message that Singapore was in a much better place in its fight against the coronavirus. He said, My fellow Singaporeans, we have battled COVID-19 for two and a half years now. After many ups and downs, we've come through as one united people. We are now in a much better position. Our population is highly vaccinated and well protected. Our hospitals and clinics are still busy, but not overwhelmed. Despite the recent surge in cases, we have been able to avoid tightening measures again. The turning point in Singapore's road to living with COVID was April 26, 2022. On that day, nearly all virus safety measures were removed. Symbolically, the country stepped down the disease outbreak response level from orange to yellow. Singapore had entered the orange alert level in February 2020. Yellow means that life can go on as normal. People no longer had to observe social distancing in public. Limits placed on the number of people who could gather were also removed. For example, the number of permitted spectators at Singapore Premier League matches were increased. Previously, up to 1,000 spectators who had to be fully vaccinated were allowed. This was now raised to 50% of each venue's capacity. To enter Singapore, fully vaccinated travellers no longer needed to take COVID tests before they departed from overseas. On-arrival tests had already been waived a few weeks earlier. Everyone could also return to the workplace. 
about the only restriction left was how masks still had to be used in public indoor settings and on public transport. Even then, people were allowed to remove their masks at work if not interacting physically with others. As part of living with COVID, the Civil Services Homefront Crisis Executive Group, which had been managing the pandemic, was stood down in May 2022. Mr. Pang Keng Kyung is the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Home Affairs and head of the executive group. He said it had been more than two long years of high alert for public servants. In an interview with the Public Service Division, he noted, I'm still surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised um, and proud um, that despite the intensity, despite the length, um, that the officers across the entire public sector persevered. It wasn't easy for them. I think they were dead tired. And I don't just mean physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. You know, it's one thing, you know, to be able to survive on adrenaline and keep up that kind of punishing pace for a few days, even a few weeks, even a few months. But for two and a half years, I, I say it's not easy, to be honest. And they had to draw a lot, I think, on their own internal resilience, their strength, their sense of responsibility and accountability, I think, to the public, that like it or not, this is, uh, this is the responsibility entrusted on them to get the country and Singaporeans through this crisis. So no matter how long it takes, no matter how tired they were, they just had to step up and they stepped up. Despite the easing of the measures, the government urged Singaporeans to remain cautious as Health Minister Ong Yi Kang said when announcing the April 26 measures. However, given the risk over the horizon, we should not declare a Freedom Day until the pandemic is truly over. Instead, we will step down but not dismantle our measures completely. By keeping certain levels of precaution, we remind ourselves that the pandemic is not over and we retain the ability to reactivate selected measures if and when the situation requires them. In the weeks that followed, more Singaporeans started travelling. There was a frantic rush to renew passports that had expired during the two years of the pandemic. From April to July 2022, over 500,000 passport applications were submitted averaging about 6,000 applications a day compared to 2,000 a day in 2019. Officers from the Immigration and Checkpoints Authority had to work overtime to process passports and it took at least six weeks for a new one to be ready. Mass events were restarted. One of the most anticipated was the match between English Premier League clubs Liverpool and Crystal Palace at the National Stadium on July 15. Liverpool won the match 2-0. Not all sectors of the economy recovered quickly. Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 added to supply chain disruptions caused by COVID-19 restrictions. Singaporeans had to deal with higher energy and food prices. In June 2022, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Lawrence Wong, announced the $1.5 billion support package to provide targeted and immediate relief for the lower income and more vulnerable groups. Local companies also got help. He told Parliament. When you combine the additional measures in the latest package with the previously announced budget measures, we are in fact providing comprehensive support for households and businesses throughout the year. Even when life returned to some form of normalcy, COVID still had some tricks. In late June, Singapore started seeing a rise in cases driven by new Omicron subvariants. The good news was patients did not suffer more severe outcomes as compared to the earlier Omicron strains. Coupled with Singapore's high vaccination coverage, the number of severe infections remained manageable. No changes were made to safe management measures. 
but to get Singaporeans to do more self-testing, 10 kits were given to each household. The government also urged the elderly to go for their second booster shots. For much of the pandemic, Singaporeans held on to the hope that herd immunity, achieved through people catching the virus and vaccination, would end the pandemic. Speaking in Parliament in August 2022, Health Minister Ong Yi Kang said it was more complicated than that. He noted that an estimated 6 in 10 Singaporeans had been infected by the COVID-19 virus. But this did not mean Singaporeans could start to let their guard down. He said, Notwithstanding, this does not confer us herd immunity. By and large, scientists around the world do not think herd immunity is achievable because the virus will continue to mutate, escape the protection of vaccines, and then infect people. In dispelling the concept of herd immunity, Mr Ong also laid the groundwork for COVID-19 measures that would last into the foreseeable future. Booster shots, for instance, would likely become a regular part of life. He said, As the protection of vaccines and prior infection wanes, the virus will circulate in our society again and cases will rise. We must anticipate when that will happen and take the necessary precautions, including the most important of all, which is to keep our vaccinations up to date. I've deliberately used the term up-to-date vaccinations rather than a second, third or fourth booster shots. This is because at some point, just like flu vaccinations, we have to stop counting the number of jabs we have taken. When COVID-19 will eventually end is impossible to say. Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong described Singapore's long journey through the pandemic as feeling the stones. He said, As the saying goes, we are feeling the stones as we cross the river. Each time we make a move, we will monitor the data, we will look at the evidence, ensure that our hospital system is able to cope with the infection situation before we take the next step. Working together will be key for Singaporeans as they tackle what else the coronavirus has in store. As Prime Minister Lee said on August 8, ahead of Singapore's 57th birthday. But above all, Singaporeans trusted one another. We all practiced personal and social responsibility. We did the right thing, even when no one was checking. We supported and took care of fellow citizens, contributing hand sanitizers and lifts and delivering food packs to those quarantined at home. Our mutual trust in one another made all the difference. Indeed, COVID has been the test of a generation. We held up through this trial to emerge stronger and more united. This unity is crucial as we move forward beyond COVID-19. And that's a wrap for the final and sixth episode in our podcast series, Singapore's War on COVID. I'm Sumiko Tan. Don't forget to share this podcast episode and earlier ones with your friends and family. You've been listening to Singapore's War on COVID, a podcast series by The Straits Times. This podcast series is based on selected chapters from a book detailing Singapore's experience battling the COVID-19 pandemic. The book, written by journalists of The Straits Times and edited by ST's executive editor Sumiko Tan, is titled In This Together, Singapore's COVID-19 Story and is available in major bookstores now. Details online at stbooks.sg That was a podcast by The Straits Times. Send your feedback to podcast at sph.com.sg. Find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or via the Google Voice Assistant and Amazon Alexa-enabled devices. 
For more podcasts by The Straits Times, The Business Times and Money FM 89.3, you can also download the audio by SPH app. That's A-W-E-D-I-O.